Here is another worked example on vectors. In this one, I'm given a jogger, and I'm told the jogger jogs east for uh, three kilometers. Okay, and so here's uh, east, and then the jogger uh, goes southeast for four and a half kilometers. Now here's an example of where I have to extract information from the problem. What mathematically does that mean, the jogger goes southeast? Well, if I'm not given a, uh, a, a specific amount, south and east, just southeast, I have to assume that it splits exactly south and east, such that there's a 45 uh, degree angle between south and east. And so, so the jogger then goes southeast, that's 4.5. And then the jogger uh, heads northeast in such a way that they end up at a place uh, six and a half uh, kilometers directly east from where they started. Well, this is a uh, apparently quite a fit jogger, unless, well, perhaps what they don't tell you is it took them several days to get there. Anyway, the, the, uh, the jogger has, uh, has traveled some, something close in the end, about 10 kilometers. Okay, a total distance, however, 6.5 kilometers from where they started. So, uh, we want to know um, exactly the, the length and the direction of the final leg of the journey. So how are we going to go about doing that? Okay, so what I have here is a, uh, a triangle that I'm going to use to try to find the magnitude and direction of the last uh, leg of the journey. So I know one side of the triangle and I can figure out uh, the other side. I know that the total length is uh, six and a half kilometers, which means that, that this length, this segment that I've identified here, is three and a half kilometers. And so now I have a triangle where I know two sides and I know the angle between them, and that allows me to use the uh, law of cosines to find the other side. And so if what have I done here? And so I first, again, start with visualization, start with a picture, get a good idea of, of what, that's, what that's doing. And then in my, my brainstorming section, I'm sort of filling in the gaps. What do I know? Uh, what can I figure out from what I know other parts of the problem? I have this length, I can figure out this length. But I can already see now that uh, the, the direction I need to go to at least solve for the length of this problem the length of this side because I have a triangle that I can use the law of cosines. So I'm going to go ahead to the solve stage and solve for that part of the problem. And so using the law of cosines, I have that the, the if this is length is c squared, that's inc equal to the length of another side squared plus the other side, the other two sides squared, minus twice those lengths, 3.5, 4.5, times cosine of the angle between them. Now, since I know that the angle between the other two sides is 45 degrees, cosine of 45 is 1 over the square root of 2. And I know that 2 over the square root of 2 is just the square root of 2, so I can do some simplification without having to, to before I plug numbers into my calculator. And the less the fewer numbers I plug into my calculator, the less likely I am to make calculator errors, so I like doing that. Anyway, so now I, I calculate these things, and, and this 32.5, this I calculate to be uh, 22.27, and so then I add those together and take the square root, and I get the length of the other side to be 3.20 kilometers. Okay, well that's great. Uh, I'd still want to find what direction it is, and I'm asked to find what is the direction east of north. Okay, well, what does that mean? I'm, I'm going to blow up my, my picture here. In the end, it's, it's uh, always, always good to have big pictures so you can see what's, what's going on. And so I have, this is a 4.5. 
this is 3.5, this is 3.2, and I know the angle here, 45 degrees. And so if I want east of north, so I'm going to draw my, my north, so here's east, and here's north, there. Okay, and so what I want to find really is this angle. This angle right here is going to tell me uh, how many degrees east of north the final leg of the journey is. And so how am I going to go about finding that? Well, I'm just going to try to apply some trigonometry rules. There's a right triangle. There's a right triangle. So in fact, if I could identify this angle, then I, I could find what theta is. Um, also, I know that since this angle is 45, this angle is also 45. So that tells me if I could find uh, this angle, this angle, then my final angle is just, I call that phi, my final angle, theta, is just phi minus 45 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and find uh, phi because I know the sides of everything now. I can use the law of cosines again. And so the law of cosines for phi tells me that the opposite side squared is equal to the sums of the adjacent sides squared 3.2 plus 4.5 squared minus twice those the adjacent product of the adjacent sides 4.5 ah, times cosine of the angle. And so I can just solve for uh, uh, theta, uh, sorry, solve for phi here. Uh, and this, if I, if I combine this, this gives me a uh, negative just to check. 2, 4 is equal to negative 28.8 cosine phi, if I do include a step here. And then I get that phi is equal to uh, 50.7 degrees. So that gives me phi for my triangle. And from that, I can find theta, what's the, the f angle I'm interested in, which is 5.7 degrees east of north. Note that when I'm trying to find angles, I always go to my triangle in my picture and use my fundamental trigonometry rules to find all the angles I need. Then I relate them to the angle that I want from the problem using just the, the trigonometry instead of trying to start with some formula for theta, which is never really going to get me the right answer. I always go to the picture and use the trigonometry rules. So finally, we can do it. I'm pretty confident about that. I, I, not too hard. But if I wanted to check, is there any way that I can uh, check the work that I did? Well, certainly. I, I, I don't know this angle yet. I can call this alpha. And I can find what that angle is and see if it's consistent with my theta being a five point seven degrees and this angle uh, phi being the phi being uh, fifty point seven so so if I find alpha I can do the same uh, sort of analysis the opposite side squared of alpha is equal to the adjacent side squared plus the other adjacent side squared minus twice the product of the adjacent sides times cosine of alpha. And now I, I have everything I can solve for alpha, and I get alpha to be 84.3 degrees. And now if I add that to 50.7, that's phi plus 45, which is here, that gives me 180 degrees, and so that's a which is what it's supposed to be, so that gives me confidence that phi really is 50.7 and that my answer is correct. And so there's a, a useful check. I, I mean, if you have to be right, you need to 
calculate a problem in every way you can to make sure that everything is consistent. Now I understand I, you don't want to spend all day on these sorts of things and so depending on the uh, the importance of the problem. However, if if you can't be wrong, you always want to solve a problem any way you can. And even if you don't go that far, you always do something to check to to make sure that your answer seems reasonable. And so uh in this case, the it's a very shallow uh, angle 5.7 degrees and that makes sense because if you look at our original problem here's 3 meters uh, it went 4.5 meters at 45 degree angle I can look at the the x component of uh, of that vector 45 divided by the square root of 2 and I can see that that is is most of 3.5 kilometers so that the, the resulting uh, say x component the, the resulting component east is going to be small which tells me that the angle east of north is also going to be small so getting a small angle here is consistent with my qualitative understanding of the problem those are the types of checks you always want to do to make sure that your answers are reasonable